Welcome to part 10 to our component-based space shooter series. In this video, we're going to be creating an enemy generator for our uh, game here. So let's start off by deleting these three green en enemies in our scene. And we'll create a new scene here. Make it a 2D node. And we'll call it enemy generator. This. I'm going to save this inside of enemies. Okay, this scene is going to need a spawner component so that we can spawn some enemies. And we're going to need a timer component. Well, I guess it's just a timer node. We'll name this timer node green enemy spawn timer. Now add a script to your enemy generator. And we'll want to select both of these, drag them in, hold control, drop to get access to them. Um, this one is going to be a spawn spawner component. So we'll do as spawner component here at the end to typecast it to a spawner component. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create a function for handling the spawning of um, this enemy, so we'll call it handle spawn. And this function is going to take an enemy scene. And it's that's going to be of type packed scene. Uh, so that's just the type for any scene inside of our game. If we come to our enemy here, we have green enemy.tscn. That's a packed scene. If you load it. So once we have that, we're going to take in a timer. And that's going to be it for now. OK. So we'll say uh, spawner component dot scene equals enemy scene. Then spawner component dot spawn. And then we're going to pass in the global position here. Um, and we want to get the position uh, between the left side of the screen and the right side of the screen so that the enemy will spawn randomly within that range. And if we come into our bounce, border bounce component, which we haven't even used yet, um, you can see we have this uh, code here that gets the width of our screen. Um, project settings dot get setting right here. I'm going to select this right here, copy it, come back into the enemy generator. And we'll create a variable up here called screen width. We'll set it equal to that. And then we can, well, let's do left edge. Well, it's always going to be zero on the left edge for this. We'll just do an off or a margin, set it to eight. There we go. We'll make another variable with margin set to eight. And then what we can do is we can say spawn, and then we'll spawn. We need to spawn at a specific vector. So vector two. And this vector is going to be um, our margin. Or let's see, we have an x, we have an x element of this vector, which is going to be rand, rand f range. So the x element is going to be between a left and a right. And so that left is going to be our margin. And then the right is going to be our screen width minus the margin. That. Okay. And then we also need to pass in a y value. And we can just do negative 16. That will spawn the enemy off the top of the screen so we won't be able to see them. Okay. Now we've spawned the enemy. We can say um, timer dot start. We'll just restart our timer essentially. So come into the timer. It's going to spawn every one second. That's probably a bit much for enemies. Um, let's start with three seconds. We'll auto start and we'll turn on one shot. Now the reason we want to turn on one shot is because we want to control when this timer starts again. 
And right now that doesn't actually matter, but later we're going to pass in a different start value. Um, so that's why we're doing it this way for now. So we've created this handle spawn. Now, you might be asking, Ben, why did you pass in an enemy scene? Can't your spawner just have an enemy scene? Um, why are you passing in the timer? Uh, can't we just connect our timer node to our spawner component? The answer is yes, we could just connect them, but the reason I'm setting it up this way is because later we're going to have more than one enemy, and we want those enemies to spawn with different spawn rates. And it would be convenient if we use the same spawner component for all of those enemies instead of having multiple. Every time you want to add an enemy to the game, you'd have to add a new spawner component. Now, we are going to have to add a new timer for each enemy type already because they're going to have different durations between when they spawn. So that's why we're passing in a timer and why we're passing in an enemy scene. So we can see what this looks like right now. So we'll say... Uh, green enemy spawn timer dot timeout dot connect. So the timeout signal on our spawn timer is going to connect to our handle spawn function. So handle spawn, just like this. Okay. Now, when we connect to this handle spawn function, Remember earlier in this series when we had a signal that had an argument to it, right? Um, this signal, for example, has an argument of node. Well, our timer doesn't have any arguments. The timeout signal doesn't have any arguments. But remember, we had a signal that had an argument, but the function that we were connecting to it didn't take any arguments, so we had to unbind that argument, right? Well, in this scenario, we have the opposite problem. And I can actually run the game and show you it's just not going to spawn any enemies. Um, well, to be fair, we haven't put it inside of the world yet. So let's put our spawn enemy generator inside the world, our world scene. So now it's up here in the top left. Let's run the game. We should get an error message here every three seconds. Yep, there's our error message. And it says, error calling signal timeout, um, handle spawn, method expected, zero arguments. And then it's going to say, but called with zero. I don't know why it says expected zero since the method is expecting two arguments. But either way, it gives us an error and says there's a problem. So we have the opposite problem. We have a signal that doesn't have any arguments to it and a function that is expecting two arguments. So instead of unbinding arguments, we're going to bind arguments to this. So when we when we pass in our hand when we pass in our handle spawn um, callable here, when we connect to it, we're going to have a dot here at the end and call bind, and then do parentheses. And now we can pass in some arguments. So the first argument we want to pass in is our green enemy, but we'll need to load this scene. It's gonna it's got to be a pack scene, so we got to load it. So up here we'll say const green enemy scene. We'll do preload. And then we can find green enemy scene right here. Now, you know, it actually might be better to make this an export variable. Um, you could do it as a constant, and then we're, we can preload it here. But I actually think doing it in, as an export variable will be better. So let's do that. We'll say... Uh, export green enemy scene and then it'll just be a packed scene this okay and so now when we bind we need to bind an enemy scene so we're going to bind green enemy scene and then we also need to bind a timer and we're going to bind the green enemy spawn timer green enemy spawn timer. So what this allows us to do is to bind these two arguments to this function so that when the function is called, it passes in these two arguments here. Now the benefit of this is if we had a different enemy, say we had yellow enemy 
spawn timer. We could just easily do timeout.connect, handle spawn, and then we would bind our yellow enemy. You get the idea. We'd bind the yellow enemy scene, we'd bind the yellow enemy spawn timer, and the function would then manipulate, it would instance a yellow enemy, and it would manipulate the yellow enemy spawn timer. Um, it will be, it's a pretty easy way, a good way to set this up. Okay, and we'll get to see a little bit more later on how it benefits us. So we have this all set up quite nicely. We need to click on our enemy generator. We need to give it our green enemy so that this export variable is set up correctly. And now we should get a green enemy every three seconds spawning from the top of the screen. There's one. Got it, there's another one. Okay, every three seconds might be a little slow. I'm gonna set it to two and save. There we go. There's one, there's one. This feels a little bit better. It's like just challenging enough. Later on, we'll connect our score to the spawn rate so that the enemies spawn more frequently as you get a higher score. That will increase our difficulty uh, as, as we increase the score. And that's the, that's the approach we'll use for increasing the difficulty of the game. Okay, so we created our basic enemy generator. That's gonna be it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, be sure to subscribe and like, uh, like the video. And if you're interested in taking some of my Godot courses, there is a link in the description of this video and also at the end of this video for my 1-Bit Godot course. So you can check that out. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.